Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Former CIA director threatened Trump with nasty ultimatum. Donald drops the presidential hammer. As you can all recall, former CIA director John Brennan has been staunch Obama supporter and a harsh critic of President Trump since he took office. And why not? After all. He is the deep state and a globalist and they need to fight in order to keep the power President Trump is taking away from them. Yesterday afternoon Brennan replied to Trump with a very curious tweet. One where he actually threatens both Speaker Paul Ryan and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. And he did this after the president called for a new Department of Justice investigation into Obama and his alleged spying of then-candidate Donald Trump. This past Sunday President Donald Trump effectively turned the tables on the Barack Hussein Obama administration after he demanded a probe into whether or not his predecessors FBI infiltrated and spied on his 2016 presidential campaign. This came after reports about how an FBI informant had multiple contacts with members of Trump's campaign and the president point-blank asked what then-President Barack Obama knew about the operation, while at the same time clashing with former CIA boss John Brennan. And yesterday, the president formally asked the DOJ to probe whether or not the Obama administration was involved in all this and if Obama himself gave the order to spy on his campaign. It's obvious the Obama administration was rotten to the core. And the real reason they started this whole hashtag resist movement was that they were afraid how far President Trump would go to uncover the whole truth about the D.C. swamp which has had a hold of American politics for decades now. Today we all need to support President Trump in finding out what exactly went on. Because if President Obama did authorize a private American citizen to be spied on, then he should be tried for this crime. Here is more on John Brennan via The Spectator. An article in The Guardian last week provides more confirmation that John Brennan was the American progenitor of political espionage aimed at defeating Donald Trump. One side did collude with foreign powers to tip the election, Hillary's. Seeking to retain his position as CIA director under Hillary. Brennan teamed up with British spies and Estonian spies to cripple Trump's candidacy. He used their phony intelligence as a pretext for a multi-agency investigation into Trump, which led the FBI to probe a computer server connected to Trump Tower and gave cover to Susan Rice, among other Hillary supporters, to spy on Trump and his people. John Brennan's CIA operated like a branch office of the Hillary campaign, leaking out mentions of this bogus investigation to the press in the hopes of inflicting maximum political damage on Trump. An official in the intelligence community tells Taz that Brennan's retinue of political radicals didn't even bother to hide their activism, decorating offices with Hillary for President Cups and other campaign paraphernalia. A supporter of the American Communist Party at the height of the Cold War, Brennan brought into the CIA a raft of subversives and gave them plump positions from which to gather and leak political espionage on Trump. He bastardized standards so that these left-wing activists could burrow in and take career positions. Under the patent of that phony professionalism, they could then present their politicized judgments as nonpartisan. The Guardian story is written in a style designed to flatter its sources, they are cast as high-minded whistleblowers, but the upshot of it is devastating for them, nonetheless, and explains why all the criminal leaks against Trump first originated in the British press. According to the story, Brennan got his anti-Trump tips primarily from British spies but also Estonian spies and others. The story confirms that the seed of the espionage into Trump was planted by Estonia. The BBC's Paul Wood reported last year that the intelligence agency of an unnamed Baltic state had tipped Brennan off in April 2016 to a conversation purporting to show that the Kremlin was funneling cash into the Trump campaign. Any other CIA director would have disregarded such a flaky tip, recognizing that Estonia was eager to see Trump lose, its officials had bought into Hillary's propaganda that Trump was going to pull out of NATO and leave Baltic countries exposed to Putin. But Brennan opportunistically seized on it as he later that summer seized on the half-baked intelligence of British spy agencies, also full of officials who wanted to see Trump lose. The Guardian says that British spy had Robert Hannigan passed material in summer 2016 to the CIA chief, John Brennan. To ensure that these flaky tips leaked out, Brennan disseminated them on Capitol Hill. In August and September of 2016, he gave briefings to the Gang of Eight about them, which then turned up on the front page of the New York Times. All of this took place at the very moment Brennan was auditioning for Hillary. He desperately wanted to keep his job and despised Trump for his alleged Muslim ban, a matter near and dear to Brennan's heart. Not only was he an apologist for the Muslim Brotherhood, but Brennan's Islam affiliate dated to his days in college, when he spent a year in Cairo learning Arabic and taking courses in Middle Eastern studies. He later got a graduate degree with an emphasis in Middle Eastern studies. 
In 1996, his ties to the Islamic world tightened after he became the CIA's station chief in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. He once recalled that during a 25-year career in government, I was privileged to serve in positions across the Middle East, as a political officer with the State Department and as a CIA station chief in Saudi Arabia. In Saudi Arabia, I saw how our Saudi partners fulfilled their duty as custodians of the two holy mosques of Mecca and Medina. I marveled at the majesty of the Hajj and the devotion of those who fulfilled their duty as Muslims by making that privilege, that pilgrimage. Out of this Islamophilia came a special dislike of Michael Flynn, who had planned to rip up the Obama era reset with Muslim countries. Furious with Flynn for his apostasy from political correctness, Brennan and other Obama aides couldn't resist the temptation to take him out after rifling through transcripts of his calls with the Russian ambassador. They caught him in a lie to Mike Pence and made sure the press knew about it. Were the media not so completely in the tank for Obama and Hillary, all of this political mischief would make for a compelling 2016 version of all the president's men. Instead, the public gets a steady stream of Orwellian propaganda about the sudden propriety of political espionage. The headline writers at Pravda couldn't improve on this week's official lie, tweeted out by the Maggie Habermans, Susan Rice did nothing wrong, say both Dem, and Republican House aides. Liberals pompously quote the saying, the bigger the lie, the more it will be believed, even as their media enshrine it. Historians will look back on 2016 and marvel at the audacity of its big lie, whispers of an imaginary Trump-Russia collusion that wafted up from the fever swamps of a real collusion between John Brennan and foreign powers seeking Trump's defeat. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click, like, and subscribe. Thank you.